the FBI has seized years' worth of emails and phone records from a New York Times reporter as it moves to plug continual leaks. The issues come to a head under the Trump administration, but as Nikki Aaron explains now, it dates back long before that. Trump's White House has a serious problem. It's leaking. A shocking secret memo leaked to the New York Times. White House's most prolific leakers. All the leaks we get out of the White House. Why this White House leaks? I mean, one of the reasons this hit is always so much fun. Is this White House is so leaky, there are even leaks about why they're leaking. <laughs> and so, in an effort to deal with the issue, it's decided to move on from its fatigued war of words with the media and show a bit of muscle. I believe strongly in freedom of the press. I'm a big, big believer in freedom of the press. But I'm also a believer in classified information has to remain classified. While Trump's verbal disputes with the press have become commonplace, his latest step can be seen as a watershed moment. That is, crossing the line into spying on journalists. Now, at the centre of this is New York Times reporter Ali Watkins, whose phone and email records were secretly seized amid a Justice Department investigation into this guy, James A. Wolf, a former high-ranking aide at the Senate Intelligence Committee, who's suspected of leaking classified information to reporters. And he also happens to be the former boyfriend of Watkins. During their three-year romance, Watkins excelled in her career, even being shortlisted for a Pulitzer. Her skills in gauging tip-offs from elusive unnamed sources were praised by her university. A breaking national story was the direct result of tips she received through unnamed sources, with whom she's developed trusting relationships. She denies ever using her former lover as a source. However, now some of her old tweets are coming back to haunt her. I wanted to be Zoe Barnes until episode four. Slipping with your source, especially an addictive congressman? We're in a very gray area, ethically, legally, which I'm okay with. Zoe Barnes at the Washington Herald, quoting a source close to the president. I'm not exactly sure how it got leaked. I want it over. I'm sorry, Mr. President, but I will not do that. Give and take. Welcome to Washington. So, on a scale of one to ethical, how does everyone feel about pulling a real Zoe Barnes for story ideas? For media rights groups, however, what we're seeing here is Trump's latest push to demonize journalists, a move which represents a true declaration of war on the press. We believe that the government's seizure of Ali Watkins' data sets a dangerous precedent. We fear it could be an opening salvo in an ongoing battle over reporters' ability to protect their sources. But such intimidation tactics on reporters are actually nothing new. Investigations into journalists and their sources were heavily ramped up under Trump's predecessor. In fact, under President Obama, the Justice Department prosecuted more leak cases than all previous administrations combined. So perhaps it's time for a rethink on using this old spiel. Journalists shine a light on many issues around the world, keeping citizens informed, prompting robust debate and discuss discussion. We certainly face that here. And holding governments accountable. We honor the many journalists and media professionals who've dedicated their lives to the profession. We see all too often that journalists continue to take great risks to pursue this important work. Political correspondent for the New York Observer, Andre Walker, joins me on the line now. Nice to speak to you, Andre. Um, the situation, media and rights groups uh, slamming Trump for this leaker crackdown involving the New York Times reporter. How outrageous do you think it is in reality? Well, look, it's a remarkably sunny day in London, and in fact, I've got sunburn, but I haven't got sunstroke to the extent that your journalist has. What a ridiculous suggestion that Donald Trump is using the FBI in order to turn over journalists that he disagrees with. It is a completely outrageous allegation, an allegation that certainly that journalist couldn't stand up, and I imagine that Russia today would not wish to stand up. Look, here's the, here's the important point. Under the Obama administration, there were a large number of people who had regular contact with um, journalists and leaked regularly. Under the Trump administration, there's been a huge effort, like with every American government, to appoint new people into those posts. It has been difficult to appoint into those posts simply because, um, simply because 
Uh, the, there has been delays in terms of approvals. And we've had a lot of people from the Obama administration who've remained in. And then the allegation comes that these are the people who are leaking. This is something that needs to be dealt with. It's something that I'm deeply concerned about. And I think it's something that absolutely the FBI must do something about. But the suggestion, the suggestion that this is Donald Trump turning over journalists. Look, I don't mean to be rude, but in Russia, the president can turn over journalists. In America, he really can't. The critics say, you know, it's Trump who's kind of leading this war on leakers. Others, though, say, well, it's been around for a long time. Barack Obama did it to, for, uh, for quite, quite for a long time. I mean, where did this all begin? Well, yeah, yeah but I, I think what we need to be clear about is this. Donald Trump has an argument with uh, the, what he calls the fake news media. Those are people who spin arguments in a way that is that becomes, frankly, dishonest and is difficult for people to fully understand what's going on in the media environment. But I think that's actually quite different to a situation where somebody is dating a national security advisor and then she miraculously happens to come across national security secrets. Now, I don't know whether these people are guilty and I don't know whether these people are not guilty, but I think what we do need to say is this is not an issue of journalistic freedom. This is an issue of national security. And it's absolutely right that there is a full and proper investigation into that. Now, look, I'll be honest with you. If I, I'm a journalist, if I happen to date somebody who is a national security advisor and I had lots of good contacts, inevitably the finger of suspicion would be pointed at me, but I would be exonerated by any investigation. I don't have a problem with that. But to say that this is an attack on press freedom, I think is grossly unfair. And to suggest that Donald Trump is behind it, I think is also grossly unfair. I think what we do have an issue, and that issue is that Obama appointed a group of people who demonstrably now have been proved to be unworthy of the national security uh, clearance that they received. They leaked like a sieve under him. But now they're not just leaking in order to make themselves look great. They're leaking in order to undermine the United States president and, by extension, the United States government. And what, what, what less patriotic or more disgusting act can you do than that? I'll tell you something. I know the United States of America. The FBI do not want to have to raid journalists' offices. But I will tell you something, they have an absolute duty to do it if national security is being compromised. And look at your television screens and read the papers. National security is being compromised every day. Donald Trump's White House was plagued in the first few months with Obama appointees, legacy people, leaking stuff left, right and centre.